Okay, this is my day seven report. Just got back from the doctor. Uh, she did the seven day checkup on this eye. This is the eye I had done. Uh, let's do the disclaimer. I'm not a doctor, have no medical training. Use this information at your own risk. I'm just explaining what happened to me. Uh, you should definitely always consult with your own doctor when you have a medical procedure, uh, big or small. Okay, so let's get on to, the, to uh, my experience. Today I'm using my computer screen right over here, so if you see me looking away, you'll know what I'm doing. I've got too much information, I can't remember it all. So, uh, first the good news. Um, I have a monofocal, single vision, interocular lens. So I got mine for distance, and right now I can see, with my right eye, I can see very far away. I can see 200 yards easily, I can see cars, I can recognize people at that distance. Uh, it's really wonderful. Uh, the color is much better, obviously it's much sharper, and one of the things I didn't realize with cataracts, it's coloring your vision. It, the, the lens turns kind of yellow-brown, all that's gone, so the colors are just much sharper. And, oh, yes, at night. Um, before I was basically night blind in my right eye, that was one of the things that kind of set me off on this whole thing was, uh, at uh, night my right eye wasn't seeing anything. And so, uh, just like vague shadows. Anyway, that's all, that's all gone. So, that's the good news. All that uh, worked well. Uh, also, I've got no post-operative infection. Uh, everything is good uh, from that standpoint. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's the good news. Okay, so let's talk about the not-so-good news. One of the things they do not tell you about when they put in a monofocal lens is that if you get a zero type lens, which is what I got, um, they say, yeah, you may need reading glasses. Uh, well, that's a little less than accurate. Uh, what you really need is, uh, right now, I can see, at a distance, I can see 200 meters off, no problem. But within six feet or two meters of where I am, everything's a blur. In fact, the computer screen is just like right here, right off camera. I can barely read that even though the font is this high. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to have to, if, if I keep this, I'm going to have to get special glasses that have progressive uh, close-up vision, probably three different levels of progressive lenses. If you've ever had progressive lenses, you know that's not cheap. So I'm going to have to have these fussy lenses and I'm going to have to keep them with me at all the time. Um, so I can't see the instruments in a car with this eye. Now this eye is still normal, okay, keep that in mind. This, But it's this eye. I, I can see far away when I'm driving, but I can't read the instruments in the car because, you know, they're what, uh, 80 centimeters away, a couple feet. Okay, uh, playing sports, tennis, anything like that where the ball comes into this little bubble around me, this two meter bubble, it goes from being sharp to suddenly being uh, fuzzy to being really fuzzy. Golf, tennis, badminton, anything like that is, uh, you know, kind of hopeless if you're like in the soccer or whatever. Uh, okay, next thing, computer. I use the computer a lot. Right now I'm developing a training course in Python for a friend of mine who happened to see some of my videos, which is kind of interesting because I'm teaching myself Python. But uh, yeah, you can't... Uh, <laughs> I can't see the computer uh, with my right eye at all, so again, I would need glasses. Um, cooking, yeah, can't do cooking because I can't read the packages. So just like, you know, heating something up uh, for the microwave or whatever, you flip it over, you look, normally it says like two minutes at whatever. I can't see that. So I have to use this eye. So had I done this eye at the same time, there would have been an issue. Uh, okay. Um, during these training courses, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen how they usually work, but like there's a computer and then there's a projector behind you and then of course you're talking to the, to the people in front of you and I, I can't switch from the computer monitor to the screen behind me, although the screen behind me starts getting clear and then looking out towards the, the people in the seminar and the session. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so... Also, what they call social distance is, you know, like talking to people up front. I can't focus on somebody's face with this. Uh, the closer somebody stands, the less I can see them. 
So that's an issue. I, again, I would need glasses for all of this. Uh, so we're talking about trifocal lenses for this. Uh, there'll be a clear, a non, uh, what you call non-corrected part up here, and then a progressive, three-stage progressive lens at the bottom. Expensive stuff, fussy, and I've never gotten along with progressive. I had them before, and I used to fall down the stairs and whatever. Uh, yeah, so that means that I will always need to have glasses with me. You know, you can't get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom or whatever, because everything between your eyes and and you know a couple feet in front of you is fuzzy. Okay, so that's kind of uh, uh, not really a, a good thing. That's that's kind of a bad thing. That's a serious impact. So I've had I've been nearsighted my whole life, and now all of a sudden I'm seriously farsighted, more farsighted than anybody I know because like my father was farsighted but if he held something out at the end of his reach he could read it. I can't do that. My arm is only about a meter long and, and uh, it'd have to be two meters long for this to work. Okay, next. So I was heading for the conclusion that there's not really any purpose for uh, these single focus lenses, I mean because the only thing that that you could use them for is if you sat on the couch and watched TV and then you're going to read a book and you put your glasses on because everything in between that distance is kind of worthless. Now your eyes may be different. I was pretty severely uh, short-sighted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in more ways than one. Now there's different ways to fix a focus issue. I was reading on the internet but I talked to three doctors since and not one of them recommends any of them. So like one of them is you can do it do the, what do you call it, it's like Lasix radio keratotomy, I think they call it, to pull the eye, change the focus length of the lens. That brings on additional problems. Uh, scarring the cornea, the outer layer of your eye, uh, can cause starring and tearing and rings and all sorts of strange things at night. So, uh, yeah. Um, one of the considerations is to reoperate, remove this lens and replace it with something else. The, uh, the options seem to be pretty much a, a new lens like this that will make me nearsighted and then I will wear glasses that I've been used to for the last 52, 53 years. Uh, so I'll be nearsighted again, but at least I'll be able to see up close without you know, all of the rigmarole with the, with the progressive lenses. Uh, but operating on an eye that's already been operated on has some serious issues of its own. Um, yeah, so it, it roughly increases your risk by a factor of about 1.5 to be working on an eye that's already had trauma. Okay, so to be honest, let's be blunt, I just plain didn't do my research. I did not do enough research before I did this. I kind of went off half-cocked. I, uh, I, uh, was one of these, it was an emotional decision. I got glasses when I was a kid. I hated glasses. It kind of, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. It ruined my whole view of my world. Um, and so when somebody said, oh, you're going to get your old vision back, you're going to be able to see far away, etc., etc., I didn't ask enough questions. It was an emotional decision, not a rational one. Okay, so uh, the other thing is you can put too much emphasis on cost. Uh, they have these multi-focus uh, lenses and they cost about two and a half times more than what I paid. Um, but let me, I'm getting ahead of myself, let me uh, go over that later. I talked to three different doctors since uh, I finished my checkup and uh, let me tell you what they had to say. First there's Dr. A, we'll call her Dr. A. She's the doctor who did this work and I have no complaints about what she did. She did exactly what I asked her to. She was very confident there's been no issues. Part of, the, part of the problem is she did exactly what I asked her to do. Um, and I just hadn't done my research. So, uh, her answer to this issue and uh, this impact on my lifestyle because now, well, I'm going to have to change the way I work if I keep this lens. I mean, I'm going to have to redo everything, how I think, how I, how I lay out my jobs in the morning and so on because I work a lot on the computer and so forth. So, uh, yeah. I, one of her options was to stay with the monofocus, and that's not monovision. That's another thing. I'll talk about that in a second. 
monofocus lens, so that's a single lens. It's just a very simple lens. There's nothing special about it. Uh, this is a zero lens. It has no correction to it, if you will. I mean, it's just a normal, it acts just like the natural lens in your eye, except it's farsighted. And she calls it a zero lens. Um, and then I will have to get progressive lenses, like I discussed earlier, kind of a trifocal progressive. Or, she said, she can go in here and replace this lens with a lens that will make me short-sighted. Uh, sorry, <laughs> near-sighted. I keep saying short-sighted, Freudian slip. Um, and she called that a minus one lens. So I'll be slightly nearsighted and frankly that option is kind of appealing because my whole life I've been nearsighted. I know how to deal with that. Um, but this farsighted thing, especially with so farsighted, that's yeah, not so much. So that's kind of uh, part of my thinking. Uh, she is not a fan of the multifocus lens. So a multifocus lens is a lens that it has rings around it and it allows focusing uh, different distances. Uh, she does not like it because the total vision is not as clear as, as uh, you know, with the mono focus. And if the lens slips off for any reason, like you get punched in the eye or something, if it slips off the center, your vision's shot. It's focusing in the wrong direction, the wrong way, everything's just wrong. Um, yeah, and she's also not a fan of what they call monovision, which is where you make one of your eyes nearsighted and the other farsighted or vice versa. Uh, yeah, I had glasses that were done that way once. Somebody talked me into doing my glasses that way. It's a terrible compromise because you're always seeing with one eye. One eye becomes dominant depending on where stuff is. And I just, you know, it, nothing was ever really sharp because, again, you're just using one eye and it seemed to impact my uh, ability to judge distance, stuff like that. Uh, the last one is the accommodating lens. I talked to her about that. The accommodating lens is, I guess, more myth than reality. Uh, uh, another doctor I talked to said that the accommodating lens, they were installing them several years ago at that hospital and they stopped because they just weren't working. So the accommodating lens actually changes shape like this. Uh, so the light passing through this way, it changes shape, it's supposed to squeeze. They said it just doesn't work. So you end up with basically a, a less perfect uh, monofocus. And so they just don't have them available here in this area anymore. Okay, so let's go on to Dr. B. Dr. B is uh, very well known in this area for doing this kind of stuff. She's uh, very well regarded. However, I found it kind of odd, this is on more of an emotional note I guess, is that when my doctor originally called her for a consultation, she said, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, until my doctor mentioned uh, doing the multifocus, which is two and a half times more expensive, suddenly she was available. You, you kind of got to question somebody's sincerity <laughs> when uh, mentioning a more expensive uh, procedure suddenly makes them available. Okay, having said that, let's go on to the more professional things. She recommends doing the multifocus. Uh, she's kind of an area expert for several hospitals. Um, she recommends it for what she used the term non-sedentary people. Uh, so she said specifically playing golf or tennis or something like that. She said they're much better. She said 85% of the people who get them do not need any glasses whatsoever. But vision is not as clear. Night vision is not very good. You'll get rings, starring, and haze around bright lights, such like that. Um, also, she said that the risk will be much higher. The multifocus has a higher risk than the single focus lens. But uh, she said it will be much higher because I've already had a surgery. And uh, let me explain that here. So let's say this plate is my lens. It's gotten cloudy. It's obviously not to scale, uh, but it's gotten cloudy. And so what they're going to do is they're going to make an incision in the eye and they're going to pull this plate out and they're going to replace it with a nice clear lens, right? And that's all there is to it. Well, no, it's not quite that simple. There's a part of the eye that even when you look it up on Google, you just Google search and you look at all these illustrations, most of the illustrations don't show you this part. There's a bag, I'm going to use another uh, thing. There's a bag that the lens sits in. It's also a clear bag. And what happens is when they 
take out the lens, take out the old lens, they cut out the front of this bag. Now they don't literally cut it, they have this little ultrasonic wand, that they go in and they blast it out. So what happens is when you put in the new lens, it sticks to the eye because the bag is no longer there. There's no longer this little layer between the, the rest of the eye and the lens. And so the next time you do surgery, that lens is now stuck to the other parts of your eye that are not so disposable. And that increases the risk tremendously. And the longer I wait to get this done, the more stuck to the rest of my eye my lens is going to be. So now I'm on a time clock. The, with the front of the bag open, the back of the bag is still there. It's kind of like a, now it's like more like a trough than it is a bag. And the, my new lens is sitting inside that trough, if you will, and it's touching the rest of the eye. And again, it's becoming attached to it. So when they insert the multifocus lens, the multifocus lens requires that the remainder of that bag be there. Now, since the bag has already been traumatized, it's already been kind of smashed up, it's not very strong anymore. So when they make a new incision and they start to pull out this uh, lens that's going to be replaced, it can take the bag with it. When it takes the bag with it, multifocus is no longer an option. So in the middle of surgery, the doctor may find out that I can no longer have multifocus and then I'm kind of at whatever the mercy of the situation is. So the risk has increased drastically. Um, yeah, again, these are things nobody tells you about until you start asking tough questions. Okay, um, oh, also damage to the uh, capsular bag may make the multi-focus lens move off center. And as I mentioned earlier, that's a serious situation where it causes you not to be able to see clearly at all. It's kind of like trying to look through the edge of a, of a pair of glasses or something, you know, where you try to look through the edge of it. No, not going to work. Um, so, yeah, um, as I mentioned, I think twice before, the multifocus is about two and a half times the cost of what I've already paid for this thing. And uh, the Dr. B said that monovision is a possibility with the one eye farsighted, one eye nearsighted, but it's compromised. Okay, yes. And she also said that the accommodating lens, the flexible lens that moves, is doesn't work so she stopped putting them in years ago okay so that was dr b's advice and then i called dr c who is a friend of my wife and talked to him for half an hour or so so let me tell you what he said and he uh does not recommend multifocus he said especially if progressive glasses are an issue with you he said you're going to hate uh, the multifocus lens and i told him yeah progressives have been an issue with me in the past it caused me to trip down the stairs several times and it just you know i was very clumsy with them looking through that constantly changing uh, vision so um he prefers the monofocus far-sighted the zero so just like what i've got that's what he prefers in fact he said yeah that's what i would have done and uh, he said he prefers progressive glasses uh, for correction up close, however, I didn't, I didn't bring this up, but it's like he said, I, I've already told him that the progressive lenses are an issue, so having this and progressive lenses aren't the first choice, which is why he also eliminated the multifocus. So, okay, fine, that kind of tells me something. And he's lukewarm on monovision. His response was, it's an option, and that was, that was his whole response. And then he also agreed that the accommodating lens, the flexible lenses, he said they just don't work. So that's, uh, that's all the information uh, that I got from the three doctors. Uh, lessons learned, at least so far. Uh, cataract replacement is not as cut and dry as I thought. I thought it was a pretty standard medical procedure. I mean, I'd read about it 20 some years ago. They were, at the time, they were using silicone lenses. Uh, now they've switched to acrylic, but other than that, no, it, it really seems to be more of a work in progress. Uh, there's absolutely no substitute for one's real lenses, natural lenses that you were born with. Taking care of mine would have been the best option, you know, wearing sunglasses and so forth. The procedure is destructive and there are some less than reversible uh, aspects to it. 
and it uh, you really shouldn't plan on redoing it. It's uh, really a one-time thing in each eye for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, so one of the major issues was I hurried. I didn't do my own research. I should have talked to these people before and not after. Uh, I did not fully understand the options and outcomes of each option and that's my fault. I'm not going to blame the doctors. I was very excited about getting my vision back and I had weeks to get on the internet and look and I didn't do it. So uh, the last thing is and probably the most important thing is uh, like I said this eye works perfectly. You know she's she did exactly what was supposed to happen. The failure comes in where I did not account for my lifestyle. I do a lot of work on the computer. I do a lot of work uh, up close in training. I attend a lot of meetings and things like that. Uh, social distance where I have to look somebody in the eye. All of that's a blur to me. And so, uh, you know, things like driving a car, um, all of those things are now going to require a set of glasses, progressive, expensive progressive glasses that I've never gotten along with. So my my work, my lifestyle, uh, things in the past just didn't take it into account. I mean and really that should have been a major part of my decision on, on how I did this. Okay so well that's it for this report. I will keep you posted on what I decide to do and frankly at this point I don't know what that is. Okay I hope you find it useful. Till later.